Primer is a 2004 science fiction film that follows Aaron and Abe, who are two entrepreneurs who invent a device that reduces the mass of any object that is put inside of it. And with this, they pretty much accidentally discover time travel, and intend to use this to their advantage to make money with stonks, baby! But obviously stuff goes a bit wrong, and the characters have to face the consequences of their discovery. The film is directed by Shane Carruth, who is pretty much a one-man crew, as he directed, wrote, produced, edited, and even composed the score for the film, as well as starring in the movie himself. Carruth was a mathematics major and used to be a developer for a flight simulation software before pursuing filmmaking. And this background is rarely different from film, but it kind of makes sense when considering all the science and maths used within the dialogue and concepts presented within Primer. Since the crew mainly consisted of Carruth, it's quite obvious that the movie was one of his firsts. And, well, yeah, it was his first of only two films, which were both heavily managed and created by Carruth himself. Both of these films are entirely his own vision. There's no studio backing behind them. They are entirely Shane Carruth films. And out of his two films, I think I like his second film, Upstream Color, way more. I mean, it's swiftly become one of my favorite movies of all time. But I still think the genuine success story of Primer is worth a video of its own. And at this point of time, despite liking Upstream Color more, I think Primer is definitely the movie I understand slightly more out of the two, but they are both amazing and I highly recommend them both. There are a ton of really great indie films that are made at really low budget levels. Normally for a film, two to three million dollars and below are movies that are considered to be working on a micro budget. But this film was made for an extremely low budget, a micro micro budget if you will, of only seven thousand dollars. And it really shows. I mean, the primary location of this film is the main character's garage. But despite being made on an extremely low budget, the film is still pretty amazing considering the budget constraints and limited filmmaking experience and equipment the crew had for making this movie. Sure, the film isn't perfect. As I say again, it looks really low budget, and some of the performances are eh, and some of the audio quality varies at points and is not the greatest. But the successes in this film vastly outweigh its flaws. The cinematography is actually very good. This film could have easily been shot so blandly with a lack of substance, but there are so many creative shots presenting certain scenes within this film. The editing is really good and kind of represents the passage of time with some of the quick cuts that were used to string the film together. The music is also really good and fits the tone of the film very well. But despite the presentation of the film, the thing that rarely makes it a masterpiece is the narrative and the unique elements used to craft the story about time travel. The fact that Carruth decided to make a science fiction film as his first film is quite ballsy. Science fiction films are often films that break away from reality and tend to show things that are supernatural, so the fact that such a great contribution to the genre was made for virtually nothing is genuinely so amazing. But as well as being a great science fiction film, this movie is an even greater contributor to the subgenre of time travel movies. Primer expresses one of the most interesting time travel stories ever told, and with this is one of the most complex ones too. The film rarely demands your full attention. It is a very dialogue heavy film and there are so many details that are sprinkled throughout the film that contribute to its overall narrative. 
Characters that you don't expect to play a role are rarely important, and there are so many lines that come back later in the film that make much more sense after watching it a few times. I'm not going to go into depth trying to explain exactly what happens in the movie, because there's tons of good videos that already do that, but also I'm not entirely sure if I understand it fully. And that's kind of the beauty of the concepts presented in this film. This film is told in a non-linear format, but that contributes to the purpose of the film. The purpose of time travel and all the jumps between this time and repeated events the characters and us as the viewer experience. The film deals with a lot of different timelines and repetition of events and deals with doubles of characters in the same timeline in such a unique and compelling way. One of the most unique aspects of this film is the narrative only scopes across a few days, as the time machine works in such a way as that you can only travel to the time that the machine was turned on. So there's no traveling back to 8000 BC or some shit. Ah, no! The film is presented entirely in the few days of the time machine's use. This means that the story is so grounded and is focused around these central characters and locations, and is yet one of the most concise and compelling time travel movies ever. The main reason for why the film works so well is the fact that it sticks to the rules that it sets out and is consistent with these rules. There are so many time travel movies that are so inconsistent with the time travel rules they make within their own universe. These movies usually use time travel as a clutch when they have run out of ideas, but some of these movies are actually trying to be a time travel movie, but they are never properly explored or explained in the same depth or even care as primer. Some of the biggest, highest grossing movies aren't consistent with the time travel rules that they create, and they end up being so annoying and frustrating to watch as they make up excuses for how the narrative flows with breaking these rules, instead of creating their narrative around the views they set out. It's just sad to see that these movies are made with such talent and people on such high budgets and studios backing them, and they can't even be consistent with something so simple. But Primer doesn't feel for a second that any of the budget was wasted. You can tell that so much effort was put into the creation of the story within every single little aspect, whether that be the small-scale prop design and the intricate details, or the extremely risky but successful decision to shoot the movie on film. The film feels so out there conceptually, despite having to deal with huge restrictions, and that is so amazing to me. The mind of Shane Carruth is truly one of the best and most intelligent mindsets out of any filmmaker. You can tell that he genuinely cares about creating art and puts so much effort and thought in creating such fascinating and abstract films. And after all that, this film has definitely consolidated its position as one of the most small-scale, low-budget sci-fi films ever. And yet, one of the most interesting ones of all of them. And that just means that, funnily enough, even compared to the blockbuster phenomenon and the studio successes, that the time travel film with the smallest crew and the smallest budget is the greatest of them all. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take this time to thank you all for 200 subscribers! Wow, that's... that's so cool! And yeah, um, just thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, if you're one of those subscribers watching right now, thank you for watching. And if you're not one of the subscribers, maybe considering doing so because it would be much appreciated. But yeah, that's all I really have to say, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!